What's up, my Valentines? My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our previous tutorial, we talked about classes, and more specifically about how static variables within public classes can be used to share state between your Chuck scripts. In this tutorial, we're going to introduce the Dino UGen and talk about a few basic ways it can be helpful. If you've been following along with these tutorials on your own, you've probably noticed a minor and annoying problem. It's pretty hard to make music in Chuck without clipping. Okay, so what is clipping? When we've looked at our sounds in Audacity, you've seen our sounds visualized as a graph, with time represented on the horizontal axis and amplitude on the vertical axis. Quick aside, the value that's being shown on that vertical axis is called amplitude, which is related to loudness, but it's not exactly the same thing as loudness. Still, things with a bigger amplitude are also louder, so if you want to think of the y-axis of this graph as loudness, that's perfectly okay too. Note that the way Audacity displays amplitude is as a value between negative one and one. Zero is perfect silence, and one is as loud as it gets. If you do anything to exceed one, that's called clipping. Now, if you're working with hardware, that might not be such a bad thing. What happens in hardware is that the top of the waveform gets lopped off and turns into something more like a square wave. This is essentially how distortion pedals work, and it can be a pleasing effect. However, in software, and specifically when using Chuck, when you exceed an amplitude of one, you've just gone outside the program's ability to represent the amplitude's numeric value, and what happens sonically to that number is undefined. That means what you're going to hear is a momentary discontinuity in the shape of your waveform, which sounds like a pop or a click. If you've been following along with the prior tutorials, you've probably noticed this happening. That's the sound of your Chuck sounds clipping. This is a minor annoyance if you're just playing around or if you're playing live or whatever. But if you're trying to record what you make in Chuck and give it out to people, it's not what you want. So one way to avoid clipping is just by manually reducing the gain on each Ugen that's contributing to the loudness. That can work, but it's a big pain. Another way to handle it is to use a gain Ugen before the DAC and reduce the gain until things don't clip. This also works, but you have to figure out what the right setting is, and that's still a pain. Wouldn't it be nice if there were some kind of smart gain that only made things quieter if they tried to exceed some threshold? In the world of hardware, that's called a limiter, and they are literally designed to solve these problems. Limiter plugins are also common in digital audio workstations for the exact same reason. Good news, Chuck contains a UGen called the Dino UGen that contains a whole suite of so-called dynamics processors, including a limiter. Let's see how it works. What I have here is a short script where I play a sine wave for two seconds, and then I add another sine wave to it and play for another two seconds. Don't worry, I'll reduce the volume of the recording. So what we heard there was that when we added two sine waves together, we got something that was definitely not two sine waves. If we look at this in Audacity, we can see that the wave hits full scale and stops, and that is creating something more like a pulse wave. If we turn on this helpful indicator called Show Clipping, we can see that it's actually clipping at the same rate as the sine wave, which is why it kind of sounds like a musical tone. Let's insert a dyno processor in front of both of these oscillators and try it again. So it definitely didn't make the distorted sound. We heard the two sine waves mixed together. If we look at it in Audacity, we notice a few different things. First, the whole wave has a much smaller amplitude. Second, the entire wave has roughly the same amplitude. Third, at the beginning of the first oscillator and at the beginning of the second oscillator, there's this little jump. What's happened here is that we are seeing the default properties of the limiter inside the Dino UGen. By default, the Dino UGen acts as a limiter. It has an attack time of 5 milliseconds, and it has a threshold of 0.5. Let's override that behavior. First, let's set the attack time to zero milliseconds. We can see that those little peaks are now gone. Now let's set the threshold to 0 0.8. We can see that the resulting amplitude is 0 0.8, which is just what we wanted. The two sine waves together would add up to an amplitude much greater than 1, but our limiter is stopping them and reducing the volume to 0 0.8, just like we asked it to. Now, the Dino UGen also has other modes. It can be used as a compressor, as an expander, or as a noise gate. However, I will be the first to admit that, as a music producer, I am really, really bad at using compressors correctly, so I'm not going to waste your time doing a bad job of that. If you know how to use dynamic processors properly, this is how you apply those settings in Chuck. All that said, it is very fun to use Dynamics processors improperly, so let's try that. Before this next script, I'm going to share a thing I learned about Chuck UGENs that you'll need to know to understand it. It turns out every UGEN has a property. It's called .op, and what .op does is 
It changes the way a UGen processes the sound that comes through it. If you chuck a 1 to a UGen's dot op property, that sets it to its default mode. If you chuck a 0 to a UGen's dot op property, that makes it output silence. If you chuck a negative 1 to a UGen's dot op property, it passes through whatever you pipe into it. So essentially, if you want to think of UGen's as guitar pedals, chucking minus 1 to a dot op property turns it off, and chucking 1 to it turns it back on again. So what you're seeing here is a signal chain in which I bring in a sound buffer, which goes into a dyno UGen, which then goes into a gain UGen, which then goes into another dyno. The first dyno and the gain UGen are just cranked up super loud, and then the second dyno is acting as a limiter in the same way as before. By chucking a minus one to each UGen's dot op property, I'm going to turn the first dyno and the gain off, play a drum loop twice, and then I'm going to chuck a one back into those op properties, which will turn them back on, and then play it twice again. Here's what it sounds like. So what we heard there was when the dyno and the gain were turned on, the peaks of this waveform got crushed down very small by the dyno eugen, and then the gain eugen brings it back up. This has the side effect of raising the relative volume of the sounds between the peaks, lending more body to the drum sounds. Anyway, if you've been getting frustrated with clipping, the dyno eugen is one way to work around that, and it also has other creative uses that we can look into more later, or you can experiment on your own. In this tutorial, we discussed how to avoid clipping by using the dyno eugen. In our next tutorial, we'll talk about inheritance and how to make your own classes out of Chuck's UGENs.